Hello. All right. It is the match we've been looking forward to. Chaos Dwarfs. <clears throat> oh, Cyril Snare. Nice reference to, uh... What was it, the raccoons? Sorry, my mic's being unruly. Okay, let's have a quick look here. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be painful. I'm imagining really good record here. <coughs> yeah, and what like two or three times as many games as us? It's gonna be tough. Uh what can we do with two hundred and ten petty cash? I guess babe and a wizard, eh? Babe and a wizard and hope for the best. Should we get an extra babe just to just cause why not? <coughs> sure. Got 150k. Probably gonna need some of that to replace some players, but we'll see. Okay, sorry, still getting used to how this camera sets up. Uh, that does not work. Okay, that works a bit better. It's still slightly chaotic here. Alright, so... Yeah, we're just gonna see how we do here. Uh, I'm not feeling optimistic, but I don't think there's any reason to uh, to be crazy pessimistic either. Let's just see how it goes. I, I don't want to kind of, uh, you know, the last thing you want to do, and it's very easy to do, is go into the game tilted. There is, there's always a chance for... Uh, good stuff to happen. I hate having to protect our thrower, but it kind of feels like the sensible thing to do. Okay, am I happy with that setup? Yeah, sure. So what have we what are we facing here? So the centaurs, we've got so the break tackle is they've got kind of the ideal skill setup. Interesting they went for break tackle before block, that was brave. This one they went the other way around. <coughs> Going for tackle is uh interesting as well. This guy must be a sweeper and I guess they yeah, they use their hobgoblins to do ball carrying. Different people have different uh ideas on that. This is their ball. Uh, retrieval person. Arguably could have used one of the centaurs for that. Um, but I suppose if you, you know, maybe you give them wrestle anyway and then you sort of say, well, why not just, while I'm at it, get a strip ball and then this is a, a great tackler. Plus strength, uh, Chaos Dwarf here. And then we've got the claw guys who are obviously going to Hurt us. And the spare hobgoblin. So, yeah. A worrying setup for sure, but, you know, we're going to try and uh, work around it. See, uh, see if we get punished. Or if uh, we can do the punishment. Good deep kick. Uh, quick snap, not... going to make a huge difference, theoretically, because they can't get anybody next to the ball to pick it up. It does kind of move them one close to getting it back, back down here, so there is that. Uh, but yeah, we got nobody kind of in a position that this should cause issues for, unless they decide to blitz around a corner, in which case he could move up, but he could have stopped here anyway, so... 
I'm presuming he's not going to do that. Might go after the guard. Probably go after the guard. And honestly, maybe one of these guys. We'll see. Uh, Chaos, I think, I think I'm probably, yeah, I think Chaos Tools may be my least favorite team to play against. Obviously, I've never played with them, because I realized I never got the, uh, the DLC for them somehow, despite getting the base game and then the Legendary Edition. I, som I somehow missed it, but yeah, they are definitely my least favorite team to play against because they they kind of mitigate everything they they play pretty much all areas of the game you could argue that agility is the one thing they don't they don't do but i mean you at least have the whole goblins so yeah he wants to use this guy to probably blitz my guard here Or maybe he'll go in with... Uh, okay, he's going in with that guy because it's easier. Doesn't get the claw, though. Doesn't make any difference as it happens. Now, is he going to be a... F well... His foul already hit somebody. So perhaps an argument for having used this guy, honestly. For the, for the hit that the whole goblin made. Wouldn't have broken armor, but... Oh. Gonna run to the kitchen and get the oven going. Okay. So, um, we don't have any Mighty Blow on this team, so I guess what we're going to do is... Let's go for a wrestle hit on this guy. He hasn't given us anybody better to go after. Sorted. I'm actually just going to push him back. There we go, we can dish it out too. Let's get Russell behind them. Uh, we could get a couple things behind them, actually. I'd like to get this guy behind, but obviously I'm kind of scared of uh, the repercussions. He's so far inwards though. Ha! 
Let's try it. <clears throat> Two, three, four, five, six. So this guy would have to GFI twice to get us. I was trying to get out of their mighty blow range. In case you're wondering what my plan was there. We've got to pressure this. I feel like considering he gave us an opening to do so. I assume he's probably going to knock this guy down. Because this guy is a lot more frightening in terms of getting the ball and getting in the end zone. So it looks like he's just marking this guy up. I imagine this guy might come in and just block him to here. Or that guy. I think I'd come in from the angle and put him here. Because if you put him here, he has a lot better time. There you go. Nice. Does mean we have to remember to get out of there. But that does that does uh, mean the pressure is continued up top. So I don't think. Uh, oh, he okay. He didn't use a reroll last time because he was using short hands. I was kind of thinking about the oven. <laughs> Alright, so he's trying to make sure we can't get out the other way. The, d the downside to this is that uh, this guy needs to get out now, which means we, if we do anything risky elsewhere, this guy gets surfed if it goes wrong. So that's something to very much consider. So you're going to put this guy, like, here? I don't think we can attack this too much. So I think instead what we're going to do is, as we're kind of placed here, we'll just try and make it a bit easier to get out. I think he's done a good enough job here of... Uh, setting setting up. I mean the stuns are nice. We we, I hate to say sound uh, greedy, but if we're gonna break armor, we do need to do it a bit better than that. Go this way. It's a bit early, isn't it? I hate the fact that this guy's about to get clobbered, but it is a bit early. I mean, you got to hit him with this. Okay. I'd have thought you would. 
<clears throat> I just figured he'd want to make the most of Mighty Blow on the catcher while he had him there. I feel like he's probably going to try and re-centralize here because he doesn't want to commit too hard to a flank when he might get all screened. We'll kind of see how he goes about that. Looks like he's going about it that way, so I feel like he's definitely coming in here. I guess he could stay here, although we can get a guard up in there, and he can't. Oh well, he's kind of committed now, obviously. But it means he doesn't really want to put the ball here, for example. I take it back. How's he going to shore that up in a way that makes it safe? That definitely helps, actually. It would be a one dice now, which isn't ridiculous. But then you'd still have the safety of this guy being here as well. Okay, so nothing too adventurous there. Don't like this. Especially seeing as we didn't knock him over. Get as many hits in as we can. Hooray! So if this guy wants to go back, he does. Alright, I'll be right back.
All right, sorry about that. Boy, it's dark in here, isn't it? Does that help at all? Ah, a little bit. Yeah, this is what I didn't like about this plan. I had to come in on him, but with this guy being here, I had to take my pick of which one I wanted to knock over more, and this guy is obviously a little bit more dangerous. Because as it is, had this guy have made that block, it would have uh, been an armor break. Oh, a GFI. No, no GFI. Oh, a GFI. Nice, nice. So the advantage of the Hobgoblin uh, ball carrier, obviously, is a uh, better chance of picking up the ball, <coughs> and it frees up your ball centaurs to do other more important work, you could argue. The downside to it is you lose the potential speed and durability of a ball centaur. But it looks like he decided to do it after picking up a uh, block and dodge. So I think, I think once he got, um, Dodge, he was like, well, I'm going to make this guy a ball carry now, because once I get block, then uh, he's really annoying to deal with. And I think the hand, uh, the fend is a nice choice, actually. I I used to use fend a reasonable amount. I don't so much anymore, but I still, I still, you know, I understand why people use it. It's a good skill. Looks like he's trying to trap us in. Okay. Yeah, you've got God, so that's a problem. Loki. <laughs> um Stay. Yeah, when you don't knock Chaos Dwarfs over, it is problematic. That one I'm actually going to follow, because he's not doing any huge help up here anyway. Uh, we haven't blitzed yet. Uh, 
This is not what we want to do. Oof. Yeah, so we've left two guys in contact, although we've left them in contact with not with guys that aren't so bad. Obviously, he could, this guy could get moved. Looks like he's not going to do it. All right, well that's good. Oh, we've got a wizard as well. I need to remember that. <laughs> Especially if he tries to push down here. Which he can, if he hits this guy, he could set up in here. And then he'll probably want to bring this guy down and round to here, which would kind of secure everything nicely. Looks like he's going to use this guy to blitz. Would be nice with no armor right there. It could have been a useful, uh, useful thing for any shenanigans that we might attempt. So yeah, it looks like he's going to try and block this up. How far is he going to take the ball? I feel like he's going to be cautious about the fireball, but um, okay, okay. I mean, arguably we could fireball this little section here. I feel like this guy's coming through to here, which is going to be a big uh, problem. Taking some chances, taking some chances, not big chances. Yeah, so this is this is what I wasn't looking forward to. Probably still gonna go for another one. Nope, stop in there. Very cautious play. Coming in here so that he can get the hit here. Get some down, which uh is not what we wanted. So, do we drop a fireball on this? I think we're gonna... Well, that went about as well as it usually goes. Which is to say, pretty poorly. Okay, I've got a plan here. Oh, I didn't realize this guy was... Okay, my plan did not work. Quite as well as I'd have hoped. Still a one dice. Hmm. 
Not ideal. Turn five, let's use one. So here's our plan. <laughs> and it didn't really work entirely, because we didn't knock guys over. Our plan was to kind of separate this pocket from this pocket. So if this pocket kept pushing, these guys got left behind. Had we have knocked these two guys over, I think we'd feel a bit better about it, but as it is... Disaster. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Bash teams just level up so much faster. Um, yeah, the, than uh, the non-bash teams, because of all the injury SPP. Like, as a team, they, they level up a lot faster. Uh, individuals level up faster on elves, obviously, like catches and whatnot, but... Yeah. You can you can beat a, a bash team uh, pretty convincingly and still... Uh, still get out XP'd by them quite quite substantially. I don't really know what the answer is to that. Less SPP for injuries, maybe, arguably. You could just do one per, like you one for a pass, one for a injury. I don't know how that would affect things. That's probably just an elf speaking, really. I'd like these GFIs to stop working. What's he going to do? Is he going to come around here? I'm going to go this way. We'll app her that. I think we're near the end of the season. Let's see if we can... Okay, this next game is better. Yeah, this is why I went here. <clears throat> Didn't matter, obviously. It's very, it's very tricky, though. I, I get wistful like this. Uh, <laughs> occasionally playing again, playing these games once they start going poorly because uh, you, you kind of hit that point where you're like, well, it doesn't feel like this is going to go well at this stage. We're three down. Two down if you don't include the sub. Um, we are not any closer to getting the ball than we're not going to be. Because um, it gets harder and harder. So what what do you do at that stage is the old question. And I guess we're just going to, you know, see what happens. Uh, do we do we attempt to sort of play for the draw? We shall see. Seems like they're having some connection issues, unfortunately. We kind of need them to roll some ones as well on their GFIs and whatnot to kind of make it more, more exciting. Because as of right now, they they don't have a lot of fear.
Hey, time is on. Oh, did it go off? Yeah. It should have only just gone off. It should be time to take the foil off. Sorry. <clears throat> Dinner plans. Uh, okay, so what can we do here? Uh, okay, let's do this. We're really just trying to get as few blocks on us as we can. Oh, do you have guard? Oh, you do have guard, don't you? Well, we could do this. Nice. Very nice. There we go. Retribution. It's it's one of their least <laughs> least important players, but you know. We've got to take what we can get. Okay, that was pretty successful. Because they're not going to score until um, <clears throat> turn 8. So we're trying to preserve enough of a team that theoretically we could one turn. Although, I feel like this team is going to be tough to do that against because they'll probably put some high strength players up there. Um, or, or the guards, I don't know. <coughs> be interesting to see what setup they do. If they set up to block the one turn, we'll set up for a riot. If they set up to block the like back edge one turn, we will attempt a one turn. So what are they blitzing here? Are they just going to blitz, blitz our catcher with Mighty Blow? I guess they don't need the claw for that, so why not? Still, we got a, a Chaos Dwarf there, that means they're going to have to play with Hob Goblin in the second half. Which is going to hurt on a deep psychological level. This guy's obviously important, so we'll try and knock him down. There we go. Oh, that's uh, that's going to get rerolled into another bad injury. Hooray! We damaged their team at least. Uh, it's 57 into a 57. Now, in fairness, he doesn't mind losing agility. <coughs> but that is nice for this particular game. A solid couple of turns there. I suppose you could argue it, it semi punished the stall, really. So I don't think he has a mighty blow block here. Yeah, he's just going for a regular one.
All right. So a little bit of hope given to us at the end of the half there to make up for our injuries. We managed to get two of them out as well. I thought he wasn't coming back for a second. So, <clears throat> three out including the throw and a blitz, so that's not great, but we did get his strength for Mighty Blowout, so it's 10 versus 9. Oh, hi, uh, hang on, that's uh, Paranarco. How's it going? Yeah, it's. I don't know if it shows up uh, to you like this as well, but it's a it's a red font against a white background as well. So I'm like, oh, that's a lot of uh, similar letters there. Got an interesting match here. We have done a little bit of chaos dwarfing to the chaos dwarfs, so that is quite nice. But I, uh, you know. That's that's only gonna last so long. We'll enjoy it while we get it though. So he's definitely set up to stop the one turner here. So I don't think I I'm gonna try it because I don't think I'm I don't think I have in my head. Yeah, injuring the two dwarfs is even better because now now we can also try and work on the hobgoblins. Um, which will, you know, if we get any of them out, suddenly we can, uh, things could get interesting. So I guess the way we do that is this way, then I can block here, and then I can block here, and then I can block here. Um, I guess we will at least set up a couple of guys for the, for a riot. I shouldn't forget that that's a possibility. I don't predict a riot. But you never know. This is a, a little enough of a pocket if things should go our way. If not, we can at least get a vanity pass. Okay, high kick's not what we're looking for. Is there anybody we'd rather... I guess this guy... Yeah, because this guy, we, we would hope level up from a touchdown anyway. Lovely. Alright, let's see how fast this goes uh, sideways. Okay, we'll wrestle. Oh, I should have used... I should have put my blocker here. Doesn't matter. Um, you know what? We'll follow that. Because then we can hit him again. Hmm. Didn't set this up ideally. I guess we'll attempt the throw first. Probably should attempt the hit first, but... Could I actually... No, I can't get around. Okay, so we'll just do it with this guy. Uh, I had the fireball. I'm down 200k. Um, it... Oh! Oh, that, that could be big. You never know. Uh, so what happened was he got... Well, you can see where he got to. And we hit four people with it, and we knocked over one. That was not the one that was... It was the least important one to knock over, but... I don't... 
ironically, I usually dislike using the fireball. I try and use the lightning bolt. I just the fireball always seems to go wrong for me. But um, his uh, rats, his team was staying so tight that it just felt like you know what we should probably we should probably hit the fireball and uh, didn't work. And I'll think yeah. I don't normally... I've, I've kind of gone away from taking the wizard recently and been actually enjoying using star players or um, like extra players more. Like I'll, I'll even use the uh, the lineman and maybe if I have the, the points given block. Just because the, the wizard seems so unreliable and it's just like a one hit could be crucial but you could also roll a one or a two or three. Oh, that, that the fireballs don't work, you find with elves? Yeah. Now, of course, logically, that shouldn't make any sense, because it should be should be the same for everybody, but I do, I do feel you there. There's just certain things in the game that, that don't, aren't actually things, but just always seem to happen. I have a theory that is completely not factual, but always seems to feel that way that uh, war dancers have inbuilt uh, mighty blow because they just always seem to injure people okay I don't want you here this time I want you here which is good I, s I think I'm still gonna try and knock over this front line because we should try and take this fight to them as much as we can we'll just drop our catches back inside we're not going to go super fast here. Does he have kick? I'm trying to remember. No, okay. I guess we'll do this just to play it slightly safer. Uh, so other things I've noticed. Jump up never works for witch elves. Uh, what else is there? There's just those little things that you you feel like <clears throat> are always the case. Giving them extra rerolls not great, but what can one do? I guess at least you don't have to worry about protecting the ball. I guess I should worry about it a little bit actually. No, we're okay. Do you play a lot of elves? I'm mostly a dark elf player, um, traditionally. Uh, I like to play high elves for a bit of a change of pace, but I definitely don't feel as adept at them. It's just fun sometimes to play something that nobody else plays, and high elves you don't see a whole lot. I'm actually going to leave the ball back where it is. See how he attacks. Before I kind of commit to anything. But yeah, I, I would say in in my time of playing... Is he going to come back? You know what, let's drop it back one more just so he can't get there just in case he does attack fully with the centaurs. In all my time of playing, Dark Elves definitely the most, then probably Wood Elves, then High Elves, and then a few horrible experiments with Pro Elves. <laughs> I say horrible experiments because I I didn't give them much of a chance and they got horribly broken. You play them almost exclusively? High Elves? You play almost exclusively? Okay, nice. And what do you favor team comp wise? I know obviously starting you don't always get all, all, everything you want. Do you do you try and max out your catches? Do you rate throwers? Personally, I love catches. 
I think High Elf Catch is one of my favourite players in the game. The thrower, I can kind of take it or leave it, but I certainly understand having one just because uh, because you max out your catches, or because I max out my catches so much. Uh, it just makes sense to have somebody that can kind of sit at the back and launch it in, in an emergency. I prefer to kind of hold it on the thrower for a while and then hand it off to a catcher kind of further up the field. Not really have to rely on passing. Okay, looks like he's going to just screen us out. He's, he's elf screening us here, which is uh, an insult. So I guess we're going to hit this guy. We're just going to keep hitting the uh, hitting the light armor and hoping that it comes good before he breaks us, which is, I guess, sort of 50-50. Just a stun. Uh, I guess we can move up. Yeah, I'm kind of worried about this guy. Okay, that's good. Um, he could reach us with this guy. Can't reach us with this guy, so let's go here. I'm not going to hurry this. Wouldn't say you're very experienced. When you started, started off with a thrower, but I feel if you get a catcher with plus AG, the job can be done without an actual thrower. Yeah, that's true. You could you can just like have it on this guy. I like to have him as an option for release. Looks like he's coming after him. Okay, so he's gonna come around and hit me from here. I like to have him as a, an emergency release valve, but I can certainly understand having him as a, uh, I guess he's got the rerolls, why not? And if he can take him out, then that's a big, um, big problem off his, uh, off his plate. Okay, that's not so bad. So, unless he does anything too much more here, I think we're just going to actually pull back. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Am I really going to do this next? I hate doing... Yep. Prepare for incoming reroll. <laughs> See, that's another thing. Arguably, I shouldn't have rerolled that, but... But I did. So that changes my plan a little bit. Now we are going to have to hit here. Okay, that puts the cat amongst pigeons pretty hard. I didn't even take into account the possibility of a double skull there, but I should have done. I should have prepped other things first. So what's he going to do? I mean, there's no reason not to at least have a one dice here, right? Well, at least our other catcher is uh, out of out of stun. That was my own fault, though. I should have, if I was going to play this um, passively, I should have backed off a little bit of a line here to protect myself just in case of that. I think I'm playing a little a little casual. But you never know. Sometimes drawing them in to your half can be advantageous. 
Sometimes it can be disastrous. We'll see. Okay, so he is more aggressively marking out, which I think I'd have done earlier, in a way. I mean, he has the numbers and he has the guard and the, the block strength and whatnot. Okay, that's solid. The more guys that are standing up, the more guys we can desperately do stuff with. So he stays just to keep this guy marked up. Yeah, the problem with Chaos Dwarf, so is that there's only so... Like, against Dwarfs, you would kind of be okay, you'd feel okay with scoring on turn, like, 14 or something, because it's going to be hard for them to score back against you. But against Chaos Dwarfs, they're so fast. Well, he'd certainly achieved that pretty well. So now he's going to bring this guy around here. I was kind of hoping he wasn't going to get a chance to pick it up as well, but... I suppose I should have expected that. His GFIs have gone well. Oh, you're gonna are you gonna bring this guy down and abuse the fact that yeah he is okay. Now be careful though, because I've made the mistake of thinking that bad dice won't happen than they have. Is he gonna come here? No, there. Okay. So it was a bit risky doing this and then doing this, because if he falls over... Oh, he didn't. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is a little bit risky, because I'm not covering myself, but I think we may be at that stage. And... What it is, is... Yeah, this is highly risky, so a lot is going to depend on this. On if we make it without re-rolling. Okay, we didn't. Okay, so that changes the plan a little bit. Because what I was going to do was come down and hit him with this guy. Arguably that might still be the best idea. not good dice odds though. <coughs> so we're looking at a 3 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus versus a 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus. But this guy needs much better dice to knock him over. So I think the situation being the situation we are going to basically gamble the game on this. He can fend us, which is good for him. Uh, especially seeing as we didn't break armor. And the ball has gone towards our end zone. Yeah. That's uh, that's where fend really comes in good. Because now he can just get a <laughs> pick this up and walk it in. Uh, he'll, I mean, he'll, you know... He's playing well, so he'll probably bring this guy up here. He could bring this guy up here. You know, basically just kind of get our guys uh, locked up here before he does it. He should be able to kind of get us reasonably locked down before having to do anything uh, that involves rolling dice. Maybe he'll make this block so he can bring the center around. Oh, the Hobgoblin can get through anyway. Hobgoblin might come and just stand here or something. Yeah, so he makes that block. Yeah, decided seeing as he didn't knock him down, he's going to just have another hit on him. Yeah, if this had been an armor break, I'd feel a lot better about this, but there's no reason why it should be. 
Going for the blitz up there, just trying to sort of whittle our numbers down. Successfully. He's got four rerolls, so this is only slightly risky. So yeah, I mean, we sort of made the right choice in using this guy instead of that guy. Down, so because we did knock the ball loose. So if he fails to pick it up, if he one and nines it, then we can be happy about that. I don't think there's any reason why he doesn't try and score if if he can. I'm surprised he didn't go this side. Well, that was hardly easy. Yeah, so the reason why you go ahead and score there is because you're two up. There's not much game to play. You've got a couple of injuries, and we, we have the potential to get back at you there. Like, that is not a safe situation. So, um, that was a uh, one where it's worth going in. So now... We are in the situation of, um, we've got to score a quick one, and then we've got to score another one. This side looks like the weaker of the two sides. So we're going to somewhat ignore that front. And we're going to make a run up the side. It's not going to work, I don't think. Because uh, he, he still has a lot of team left, and we do not have a lot of team left. So uh, he should be able to get enough guys over here to pretty much block us off the end zone. Even if we get position that we want. Well, he's got an embarrassment of uh, re-rolls now, and we're down to one. stay on that one. Ideally this guy wants to dodge over here. I do need to get this into my catcher's hands though. Oops, <laughs> that would be unfortunate. Uh, where's a good place not to get in my own way? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that would get in my own way. I want to get as far up as I can. Guess this is as good as we can do, really. We tried to fail that catch. Okay, now we do make this dodge, because we need to move people. You could get to there. Watch the uh, double both downs now. Okay, push is actually sort of okay. We'll just come up to here. Come up to here. Not entirely safe due to the fact that they can potentially knock both these guys down and come in the back way. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll just go to here, I think. I 
All right. <clears throat> we got to give it a go. Get on the scoreboard if we can. If we can't, fair enough. At least we tried. Yeah, I do struggle against the old, uh, do I struggle not to give in to, uh, feeling a sense of doom playing against Chaos Dwarfs, but we, we had our chances, we just, uh, maybe didn't, didn't play aggressive enough in the second half. So yeah, it looks like he's gonna take out both these guys and then come in around the back way with this centaur, who at least doesn't have tackle. Actually, he only needs to take out this guy. Then he can come around. See how this goes for him. Is he gonna... I guess he's gonna hold on to this guy as a potential ball retriever as well. So it'd be nice if he doesn't knock us over here. He does knock us over. It'd be nice if he doesn't uh, armor break us here. Okay. Don't think he's going to reroll that because that's a six. A uh, decent bounce for us, I think. I feel like he is going to attempt to dodge this guy around to grab it. Not sure what this guy's plan is right now. Oh, okay. Surprised he didn't go with this guy. F okay, there we go. Alright, so that didn't really entirely work out for him, which is nice. Alright, so what is the plan here? I guess arguably we should try and do this. Could try and do that. Is there any value to it? I'm honestly not sure there is. Okay, uh, nothing else to do here apart from try and abuse Agility 5. <laughs> or not. Well, you know, double ones are double ones. The, the good thing about double ones as an elf is you can kind of feel like, well, you know what? It doesn't matter what I did there. I could have had the best play planned out ever. Ultimately, I was just probably pretty obvious. Going to come here, grab the ball, run as far this way as I could, which shouldn't be very far, and just try and lob it at him. Probably it would have been caught by this hobgobbo here. Hey, he used a reroll. Um, but yeah, you know. When you're when you're playing elves, you just gotta tell yourself it doesn't it doesn't matter. Double one stops everything. At some point you gotta roll those agility four rolls, even if it's just picking up the ball, and if you double one it, it can be a problem. I was I was kind of relying on our agility five and built in dodge there to 
take care of most of the rerolls and then save the reroll for maybe the GFI or the throw. Arguably I could have stood next to this guy. I could have dodged here. If I didn't use my dodges I could have gone here, 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 here and thrown from here. Mm, that might have made it a 3 plus actually. We're not quite close enough so yeah I probably would have just come to here. So now he's got it on his blodger. Um, I think we're pretty much we're pretty much done for. This is this is going to be our first loss here. Which is sad, but at the same time, it's not like we're at the top of the table. We haven't we haven't even played enough games to uh, to even remotely think about that. What were we before this? I think we were... I think we were seven and then two draws if I remember. Our last game was a draw and this one's a loss. We're kind of getting to that team value now where you start running into teams that can uh, can beat you up. Out goes Rizzanti. He'll be back. I wonder if there's going to be a foul incoming. No, nope. I guess there's no real, no real need. I don't have anything I can do here, so I'll we'll just try and hit hobgoblins, eh? And then try and dodge this guy out. I think we're in runaway mode now. I hate to. Uh, capitulate but we we're we we're already only really fighting for a uh, you know for a, for a consolation goal at this stage in the game maybe if we had scored um, last turn we'd be going for it a bit harder I will skip that a stun is fine but yeah definitely definitely by now just going for consolation and uh, SPP. Neither of which I think we're going to manage, but there you go. I suppose we could look back on the fireball and say, well, maybe if we had knocked it loose and knocked another guy down, perhaps. But, um, you know, obviously the guy we're playing against knows what he's doing and has um, a very efficient team. Uh, it's pretty much exactly what there's no the I think the only skill you could argue is slightly surprising on the team is fend L like looking at the whole team that's the only skill that you probably would say okay that's um you, you don't often see it but even even that skill I think is is justified considering his uh his build here Outside of that, it's just standard, standard Chaos Dwarfs. And they do it so well. Oh dear. I really hope the end of the season is incoming here, because they're just breaking us now. Looks like he is going to foul the old, uh, the old catcher. And and this is this is why I intensely dislike playing them. The combination of really strong blockers with cheap guys to foul you is is painful. It's the same yeah. Chaos Tools I think are my least favourite team to play. Probably maybe followed up by Necromantic. I don't know. At least Necromantic have some uh, style. Uh let's see, I think if I do this. But yeah, Chaos Dwarfs are just made to break you and then still be able to score against you. At least at least Chaos aren't that great at scoring against you. Oh, I forgot to move this guy. Um, I 
I guess we'll try and run him out of danger, eh? But yeah, Kaelsdorfs are just, they just got a little bit of something for everything. And and the the wider uh, access to Claw, and the fact that Hobgoblins are more agile than uh, zombies, I think just, you know, I think stuff like that is what pushes them over the edge of making them better than Necromantic, even though I actually quite, I think Necromantic are really good. So he could go for some SPP here by handing the ball off and doing a throw. We'll see if he does that over fouling, or if he's gonna go be be a true chaos dwarf. The fact he re-rolled that suggests that he probably is gonna foul here. I guess he doesn't need to get SP. He could have handed off to this guy and tried to get this guy leveled up. I guess he can still can after he fouls. Cannot break Sirush. He made it. So, there we have it. Bit of a painful defeat there. I apologize for that one. Always think that L's uh, skill is dodged. That really allows some good plays, but even though it's counted after time of tackle and L's, especially high L's, are just yeah, exactly. They they really um, it gets painful. I think yeah, because I, I think wood elves at least have that um, insane speed and war dances to you know to have that threat on cages. High elves they kind of lose their threat pretty quickly. Dark elves at least. I don't know. I, something about Dark Elves, I don't know if it's the fact that they get the extra blitzes. Um, they remain a bit more competitive further in. Um, but uh, but yeah, High Elves, they d I mean, they d Yeah, and the Frenzy on the Witch Elves. Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, and, you know, arguably you can get Frenzy on these guys, and honestly, I do sometimes put Frenzy on one of the Blitzers, but then you're losing a Blitzer, right? The great thing about Dark Elves is you get four really solid high movement Blitzers, starting with Block, and Witch Elves are an extra on top of that, so, um, yeah. Yes, we gave them a lot of SPP there. That is, that is a whole ton. So they've got 18 armor breaks, and I think a decent portion of those were... Yeah, so one in three of those... I don't know if it includes that. I think one in three of those was an injury. That said, we got <laughs> two injuries out of eight armor breaks, so... Who are we to complain, eh? So let's see what state that leaves our team in. So... Oh, we got... I guess we got another win that I forgot. So eight, two, and one, which is at least still solid. Our team is our thrower will be back, no problem. Uh Blitzer, I think this guy will be back. I think we appoed that from a dead into a miss next game. So he'll be back. Uh this blitzer is the problem, I think. He got he got a niggle. Yeah, we'll have a I'll have a think about that. Arguably, we should replace him. Uh, so we've got two Russell guys on the team. I think this is just going to be another block. Especially, especially with all our Blitzers getting knocked around. Yeah, we don't have a lot of block. So yeah, next game is going to be a little <laughs> a little bit of a change up. Yeah, our record's, our record's still not bad. I guess I forgot that. I don't know when we got that extra win. Did I play a game in between the game? No, it was draw. Maybe I forgot about this against this Chaos team. But yeah, I'll have a think if I want to replace our Blitzer. Probably, I mean, he's only on 11 SBP. 
probably should be replaced because what you don't need is to make it even easier to injure yourself. And we don't technically need to buy this lineman back yet. So we're going to play a game next game with no blitzers, no thrower, <laughs> lots of catches. That's going to be an interesting game next time. Thank you, Paranarko. Um, yeah, uh, we will we will see how we do. Uh, sleep well. I'm also going to bed, so uh, I will catch you next time. Bye for now, everyone.